Alleluia. If you know that God is with you, if you know that this is the day that God has made and your joy will continue to be full forever, shout Alleluia. Alleluia. If you are happy with our sister, our mother that is celebrating her 50th today, I want you, and you know that. Yet, you might be over 50, you might be 100 years old, but if you know that God is going to give you the grace to see more years, I want you to shout, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let us have a seat before God. Please, you know this is a Bible reading church. If you are going to be reading the word, get a mic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And please, can you give that extra mic to maybe one of our sisters that might want to read? The one there. I pray that God will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. May God be praised forever in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the things that I love about this church is this. We are Bible readers. Not just readers, but we try to understand the word of God. And today being a special day, we want those at home to be able to hear the word. And to be able to rejoice with us and even with our mother. I pray that our joy shall be full in the name of Jesus. The theme for today's word is this. Every moment matters. Can we say that? Every moment matters. And today we will know why every of our moment in this life matters greatly. I pray that God will continue to bless his church in the name of Jesus. The book of Psalms said, shout for joy. Psalm 100 verse 1. I want somebody to read it. The book of Psalm 100 verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with Come singing. before his presence with what? Singing. singing. Sit down, man. My version says, shout for joy. Not maybe only make. Come before God with joyful songs. The thing with God is this. If you are without joy, you are without God. Can you tell somebody if you are without joy, you are without God? Because God is a God of love. And God is a God of joy. Sadness does not reside in God. So I pray that sadness will never be a portion in the name of Jesus. So this is why I want us to be happy. You have to show, whenever you come to the house of God, you have to reflect God. And I pray that God will help us to that level in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to ask a question. Is there anyone here that deserves joy? If you deserve us, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is there anyone here that deserves blessing? Hallelujah. If there, is there anyone here that deserves that God needs to glorify him or her? I pray that God will do so in the name of Jesus. Amen. If we look at the book that was read to us, the book of Leviticus, it is stating to us those things that God has in plan for every believer. Can we close all gates? Are there people outside? Eje katibo Jesu Christi mo kamo kokuro dinu hadiyo ayetiyo folo. 
kaleri gala bekere 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 le bojura soke bekere le to anura wo sha bekere jesu hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Please close all gates since they're not coming in. I pray that God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whenever they're ready, they will let us know. Open to the book of Leviticus 26. Let us open to that book that was read to us. I want somebody to start reading from verse number 13. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. Which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. That you should not be their bondmen. And I will. Are you reading Leviticus 26? Mm -hmm. From verse number 3. Are you, okay. If you follow my decree. Yes. And are careful to obey my command. Yes. I will send you rain in its season. If you follow my decree. And you are careful to obey my commands. Then God will do what? Send rain in its season. God will send rain in its season. Uh huh. And the ground will yield its crop. Uh huh. And the trees eat their fruit. Yes. Your tracing will continue until grape harvest. Yes. And the grape harvest will continue until planting. Yes. And you will eat all the food you want. Uh -huh. You live in safety in your land. You live in safety in your land. Uh huh. I will grant peace in the land. I will grant peace in the land. And you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. When you lie down, no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land. Yes. And the sword will not pass through your country. Yes. You will pursue your enemies. Yes. And they will fall by the sword before you. I pray that every of your enemy will fall before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh-huh. Five of you will chase a hundred. Yes. And a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. Yes. And your enemies will fall by the sword before you. Yes. I will look on you yes. with favor yes. and make you fruitful yes. and increase your, you in number. Uh -huh. And I will keep your, my covenant with you. Yes. You will still be eating last year's harvest. When Open the gate. Let us have a seat. I want you to look at somebody and say, I am blessed to be here today in the name of Jesus. The word of God, as it's been read, said, if you follow the decrees and carefully obey the commandments of God. Most of us, when we read that, we will skip unto the blessing. God said, if you follow the decree 
and carefully obey the commandment of God. Then I will give you rain. Rains of blessing. Then I will give you an harvest. Which means whatever your planting is will bring out something that is great. Then I will give you comfort. Then I will secure you. Make sure that no enemies can touch you. See that man? You will have absolutely peace. You know what they call absolute peace? Whereby, even if the left is falling, the right is falling, and you are unmoved. Most of us don't have that. When things are falling to the right, to the left, we are already running around. Thinking, oh, it might be my turn. And the word of God said, God will give you the grace to deal with your enemy. Many of us here, including myself, what scares us most is the enemy. Because we are thinking, because this has happened to my forefathers, to my foremothers, my sisters were attacked with this, my brothers were attacked with this, maybe it is coming to me. It will never come to you in the name of Jesus. And it will never come to me in the name of Jesus. God said, I will make you stronger multiple times. That is why 20 can defeat 1,000. What kind of strength is that if it's not God's strength? But the thing is, if you obey the decree and carefully follow God's commandment, God said, Father, I said, I will favor you. You'll be favored in the name of Jesus. You know, many of us, we kneel and we pray for all of these things. But you, do you know that... It, to be candid, truthfully, we are not supposed to pray for any of this. All we are supposed to do is follow the decree of God, follow his, do, obey his commandments, and all of this will be given to us freely. But our way young, we want to put the cat in the front and put the us at the back, and we want things to work. Most of us think God is our servant. We want to tell him what to do, but we don't want him to tell us what to do. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God said, I will keep my covenant with you. God said, you will become a child, my own child, my own very child, and I will be your father. We will sing a song, I have a father that will never ever fail me. We will be dancing, sweating like, uh, what, I don't even know what to mention. We will be dancing and say, I have a father that will never ever fail me. Truly, if I ask you, do you truly have God as a father? Or is it somebody somewhere that you constantly call when you want to go to the restroom? That's the first thing you call. Can I please, sir, can I visit the restroom or should I not? And the person will tell you, leave it five minutes' time. Imagine that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a father that will never ever fail me. I have a father that will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever fail me. Rock of ages, never. Eh? Huh? What about you that you are failing, failing God? What about you that you are failing, failing God? What about you that you are failing, failing God? What do you want God to do? I pray that God will not fail us in the name of Jesus. All you have to do, all that I have to do, because we are all in the same thing. Most pastors that preach prosperity, righteousness, and do as if they have nothing hidden, it's a lie. Men are bound to fall into sin. But the thing is, we are also bound to rise up. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you become God's child, then God becomes your father. And when God is your father, will I let anything happen to my own children? Will you as mothers or fathers let anything happen to your children? If the last thing that you do to save your child is to fight someone, you will fight it. Even if person has to beat you, that person will beat you, but not your child. And who can beat God? God will help us to that level in the name of Jesus. And every of this thing is done. I want somebody to read the same person I was reading. Read from verse 9 and read to 13. All of this is done for a purpose. God blessing you. God keeping you alive. Hold on one second. God making you to be here today. God waking you up. God giving you children. Giving you a job. Giving you all the money that you have. That you think, even in Moshe, I was so smart. I put this into this investment. And it bring out this. Uh, if there are so many people that have put a lot in the investment and have been wasted. 
it is just God. Uh huh. From verse nine. I will look on on you with favor. Yes. And make you fruitful. Yes. And increase you your numbers. The God will increase your numbers. You are you came as one. Now you have like four, five, six children. Somebody like me, I'm hoping to have like twelve. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that you know when i go to the field i already have everything the goalkeeper and everything is done oh my wife is looking at me god bless you in the name of jesus hallelujah uh-huh and i will keep my covenant with you yes uh-huh you will still be eating last year harvest you will still you see these are the promise of god we are supposed to be eating last year harvest now but the the years only is supposed to be coming in also uh-huh when you have to move it out yes to make room for the new uh-huh i will put my dwell i will put you in my dwelling place you see i will put the thing that god is saying here you will become god's dwelling place there's a song that we sing almost every wednesday because one of my sisters is always here she will come up with a song i have a very big god do and now we have our own version now after saying it's always by my side we say it's always inside me a very big god do inside me inside me the reason why we always say he's inside us is this if god is by your side there's tendency for you to walk away from god hallelujah. hallelujah do you know how many people that they would go to places and then within their heart they're not saying it they say god this place i'm going to you don't have to follow me because you don't want to see this <laughs> hallelujah am i lying sir somebody that wants to go and meet another person's wife or another person's husband doesn't want to invite god into all that but what I'm saying is this. Go towards that verse 13. Verse 13. Uh-huh. I am the Lord your God. Yes. Who brought you out of Egypt. God is the one that has brought you out. Even till now. That dream that you had. That you say. Ah, 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 and you were trying to call Jesus. It's impossible. And all of a sudden you wake up. It is just God. Uh-huh. So that you would no longer be slave. God doesn't want you to be slave. Uh-huh. To the Egyptians. Yes. I broke the bars of your yoke. Yes. And enable you to walk with Ed, ha, Ed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, my sister. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why God is doing everything that he's doing for you, regardless of your sin, is because he doesn't want you to be in shame. God wants you to lift your head and your head being high. God wants you to walk in his glory. And if I ask many of us, are we walking in God's glory? we are a kind of uh, in a way everything that god is doing for you from the time of your birth till now is so that you will never be put to shame now the point is if god is doing all of this to you what are you doing to that god let us even imagine so many things that have happened just even in the united states the statistics of people that died within these two years now, how many of you can they take out of that statistics? How many of just want you? So do you want to tell me that it is because you know how to wash your hand? You know how to go to places, you know how to go to the doctors, you have some medicine that you take, it's so special, you have some covering around you, so special, that makes you not be part of that statistics. There's nothing that we do that can help us, it's only God. And it's because God wants you to have your head high, above shame. We will never go into shame in the name of Jesus. But God is saying, if you do some things, follow his decree, obey his commandment. And verse 2 gave us one of his commandments. What did verse 2 say? Somebody. Observe my Sabbath. Uh -huh. And have reverence for my sanctuary sit down god bless you in the name of jesus god will bless us all in the name of jesus Amen. observe my sabbath if i ask you how many of you is observing sabbath how many of you reference the house of the lord do you know when we are in the house of the lord that is when we know we have special friends when things are going on we want to talk about business about projects about children we want to Look at our sutana. Yeah, did you just buy this? Communicate about how to buy sutana, how to buy ashoki, how to buy ashoki. But God said, observe. 
my Sabbath. I reference my temple. If I ask you now, where is the temple of God? Is it this building? So if the temple of God is in you, are you respecting that temple of God that is in you? With many things that we did, even this yesterday. Just look at yesterday. And many of us be like, mm-mm. Are you referencing the temple of God? Are you respecting God? Because to reference means you respect that person. You pay that person homage. Are you giving to God what we talk about? I love my father here. Every time you talk about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is nowhere but it should be in you. And if the kingdom is in you, if you see a kingdom, you're supposed to see the, the wealth of that kingdom, the glory of that kingdom, the, the light of that kingdom. And that is why I wonder when any of us in a place and somebody cannot ask you are you a christian and you say yes and then say oh i want to be like you i pray that god help us to that level in the name of jesus yeah. to observe sabbath and to reference god three things is needed number one is rest if i ask how many of us now ask rest even in our sleep we're thinking you know, some people in their sleep, they are already in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, maybe Ogun, Nigeria, maybe Yabekuta, Nigeria, maybe in Oyo, Nigeria, in their sleep. Thinking about so many things, things of this world. But do you know that if you are without rest, then what's the purpose of serving God? God said in his word, he said, I will bless you and give you rest. I want to Hallelujah. They will pronounce that word. And what they want to You know that uh, is that not what we used to pronounce? But God said, I will give you rest. The first thing that you need to have to, to follow God is rest. Even when the old world is falling rest be assured we are only in fear because we know that we have failed god somewhere so we think it might be used against us the first thing that you did is what rest when somebody says i'm going to kill you be rest assured god is with you but how can you be rest assured when you have not followed the decree and obey his commandments number two is worship when we talk about worship many things it has to do only with when we congregate together on sunday worship is a personal thing it has to do with your relationship with god all those people let me give you an example all those people that worship all those gods in nigeria i'm using nigeria because that's what i'm used to when somebody worship like Ogun or Oya, they dedicate themselves to follow everything if they say use three coconuts they don't add one they don't say this is one for my father my great grandfather i'm going to add it to it but when it comes to we following god we would always give excuses there's a prayer that some people used to pray and it gets on my nerve it's not somebody that you did good to but does not recall does not reflect does not say thank you does not say anything so if you are somebody like that what purpose are you here before god our mother that is here today is because she felt you know what i have to give god all the praises 50 is not a small thing a baby is born in the morning and he will die and in the, sometimes in the, within the next minutes that will not be our case in the name of jesus number two thing is worship and the third thing is good works I'm telling you, many people in this life that are blessed, that have never stepped their foot into the household of faith, into the church, is because of their good works. If you want to, I'm not talking about go to, going to heaven, no. If you want to be blessed on heart, do good works. Make these three things part of the things that you do. Help the homeless, help the widow, help those that have nothing in your area, and help the house of faith, um, house of, house of faith, that is the people of God. I'm telling you, if you can do that, you'll be blessed. Yes, you will be blessed. Blessing that I'm talking about is you will not borrow. You will have sufficient. I'm not saying you'll become a billionaire. Don't go there and say, one pastor told me to become a billionaire. I have to do this. But for you to be comfortable in this life, like have all the things that you need, and nobody troubling you, do those three things. 
even if you don't go to any church, you will be blessed. It is just the fundamental rule of God. Hallelujah. Now, salvation is different. Can you, so, can you tell somebody, God is blessing me today in the name of Jesus? But today, what we are celebrating is a birthday. Just to tell God, thank you. And one important thing that God told every one of us, which many people don't recall, I want somebody to open the book of Psalm 90 verse 12. If we can keep that with ourselves, please open, get, open the gate, let the person outside come in. I will praise thee, O my Savior. I will praise thee, O my Savior. I will praise thee, O my Savior. I will praise thee forever. Hallelujah. Psalm 90 verse 12, what did he say? Are we, are we not the Bible readers? Please, you have a mic. Let's read. So teach us to number our days. Thank you. You see, our mother is the one reading it. Teach us to number our days. Can somebody say, teach me? Teach me. Uh-huh. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That we may apply our hearts to wisdom. God bless you. See, some people in this life doesn't celebrate their birthdays. I don't blame them for it. Some people don't care about celebrating their birthday. And the reason is when you begin to look at some things that are yoked with celebrating birthdays, you would not want to do it. If you, you see, the origin of things matters. If you go study the origin of celebrating birthdays, lighting of candles, and all that, you would not want to celebrate it. But God said us, teach us to number our days. Now, if you are numbering your days, would you not number your month? Would you not number your years? Hallelujah. To number your days, they say this is day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. So it is one day to celebrate your birth. How you celebrate it, the purpose for your celebrating is what is between you and God. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. And when God said, teach us to number our days, some people think it's only about numbers. What it is, is teach me to be able to, you know, take a summary of my life as I move forward. Which means each day you want to give account, you want to account for the things that you do in that day. Look into yourself. I said, everything that I've done today, let's say if I go to sleep now and it's my time, will I be able to make heaven? That is what the teaching means. As we are as children of God, you that you are 50 today, you are supposed to look back and see, okay, for these 50 years, what have I even done? Have I even made impact in the life of anybody? Have I made impact in the life of, of the children of God? Have I done anything even for God? Some it's up. Uh, we can tell now when we fail or when we pass. Hallelujah. Do you know our hearts can tell us when we, where we are going? We can pretend and say, uh, yes, Jesus is helping me. But our heart tells us. We have a conscience. Everyone that is celebrating our mother here today, you are supposed to do the same thing. At the end of the week, ask yourself, what have I even done this week? If everything you've done in that week is just me, myself, and I. You see, that is why I love God. But we keep singing that God doesn't care. God doesn't care. God doesn't care. But one day, the end will come. And then the only thing that is left is judgment. You see, I'm going to tell you something. There are some things that God has set before us. Hebrew 9 verse 27 said it is appointed for every man to die once. And after dying, what is it? Judgment. Which means for everyone that is here, three things we have in common. Live, die, judge. Hallelujah. That's everything that we have in common. We are living now. And God will grant us the grace to see 70, 80, 90. I want to see 120 in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And I told my wife, I said when I'm 100, I think she will be getting old then. Then I will think of um, adjusting my life. Maybe, you know, because I've got to keep making children. Hallelujah. Huh? Yes. 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 And just leave it that way. God bless you in the name of Jesus. 
See, that has been an Andrew that I use in my life. That, okay, I'm living today. If I die, then it's judgment. Okay. Account for the things that I've done from the time of my birth till now. How do I look before God? Do I look good? Do I look fair? You see, all you have to work on, if you can look fair, you are getting there. Because nobody is perfect. If you look good, that is actually awesome. But it can make you to start feeling that you are above all. If you look excellent, be careful. Because that is a tendency sometimes to fail. Hallelujah. Why I'm saying that is, you know, the, those people that are up there, so perfect. The only place that can go is where? We will never go down in the name of Jesus. But you that you are down, struggling with God, God help me, God help me. Where do you think you can go? Up. And that is why when you see people signs, you know, some pastors, they'll be doing as if, no. I have one friend that every time he goes to the pastor and talks to the pastor, you know, the couple go to the pastor. The pastor will make them look like they are rubbish and make his own family look like it's perfect. And then when they tell me, I say, that is not a pastor because I believe they have their own troubles in the house. Every family have their own issues. And sooner or later, the, the thing was exposed and the guy was like, oh my goodness, I never knew pastor is also like that. They found out the pastor was also, you know, anointing some church members. God help us in the name of Jesus. I want you to look at today because we are celebrating my sister here and she's also my mother. I love her so much and God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. God will continue to bless us all in the name of Jesus. Account for your life every day. God told Abraham, make ready your home. We should think about that every day. Make ready your home. We are not going anywhere, not yet. But if we keep thinking about that, we will be able to do things right, right, right. Look at yourself. How many people even have you refused to help in your entire life? You are 40, you are 50, you are 60. All you do is, I can't help you, I can't help you. I can't help you. I can't help you. I can't help With all the things that God has done for us. Many times, what do we usually do to God? You pray to God for a car. God buy the car for you. The first thing you want to do is tell your friends about the car. Not go to God to say thank you. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Can you look at somebody and say stop pretending. Start preparing. You see, one of the things, one of the problems that we have in life, because of this birthday, I'm going to tell you, we keep pretending we have like 100 years left. We keep pretending. When we think of it, we say, ah, just so <laughs> the person that said that yesterday is six feet under. You know, people that, that can pray better than you. Sometimes I wonder people that I know that actually can pray better than me. People that I know that can walk better than me. Do this work better. They died. Then you, what of you? Eh, just because you, many of us think because of the gift, I can minister. Yes, I can prophesy. I can pray. I have the power of authority. And then with that, we think God will not even take us. Unless we tell God, Father, I want to go tomorrow. Come to me to tomorrow. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Start preparing. That's what the word of God is telling us today. Because every moment matters. Every moment matters. Start preparing. Prepare your homes. Prepare your children. I don't see the reason why you'll be, you'll be a Christian and your children will be somewhere else. Or you are an imam and all your children are Christian. That should tell me something is wrong with you in a way. Because if your God is not worthy enough serving, then you have a problem. If your entire home would not follow your God, there's issue. Ah, and to mama dash of funitorni. You can't have all ranks and not be right with God. God told Abraham, teach your children. Even he said, I know that you will teach. That's what he, that's what he said. Are we doing the same thing? Ah, alone, I am saved. What about all others that are around you? Be the light of God that will shine into their life. Because every moment matters. If somebody, because of you, leave God, 
Ah, you better start praying. Everyone should, because of you, come to God. I tell the congregation one day, I said, if you are in a place of work and people cannot ask you or tell you or know that you are a Christian, there is trouble. If you're a common guy, regular guy, you you know, we know many of us are there. You get to work, they use F word, we use F word. They use M word, we, we use M word. We use everything. So they can't tell. So one day when you, I, it happened one day. One person was, everybody knows that's my place of work, that I'm a Christian. But somebody one day was said, you know, you know, I used to go to church and they just look at him and like, okay. And I said, I'm a Christian. Don't you know I'm a Christian? And the guy said, if you're a Christian, I don't think I want to. Because the act does not signify Christianity. Stop pretending. Let us stop pretending like we are not going to die. It's going to come. But the grace that God has given to you, start accounting for those things that God has given to you. Make impact. It's because she made impact in the church. That was why the old church asked to rally around that. She said, no, I'm not. I said, no, we have to. Hallelujah. Now, if it's just a regular common person, do you think I will go all the way? Or do you think the church will go all the way? You have to make impact. Make impact in your family. So that at the time of need, your family will stand in for you. Make impact in your home. So that at the time of need, most of us that think we are, we are just that good, you will need help one day. Not dying, not crying, not any of that. There's some time that you will just need help. People. If you have not made impact, who is going to stand with you? I went to a wakeeping yesterday and I was surprised because even those people that used to fight this man stood and they were saying great things about this man. You know, I was like, okay, something is wrong here. I pray that God will help you in the name of Jesus. Can you look at somebody that says, start preparing? You will not die in the name of Jesus. You will not die in the name of Jesus. You will not die in the name of Jesus. The reason why I'm saying start preparing is this. Most of us, we have already drafted how we want our life to be. I want to become a doctor. I want to become a lawyer. I want to have this. In 10 years, I should have five cars, 10 houses, and we begin to draft our life towards it. But do you know we don't handle the kingdom of God that way? The kingdom of God is always the last option on most people's list. When everything is done, then I will. When everything is done, then I will. Imagine, let's just say God think of that one day and, believe, and say that, you know, when everything is done, then I will to you. How would you feel? You just sleep one day and then do you hear the word and say, okay, because you have made me the last option now, let me now start making you the last option now. I pray that will never happen to us in the name of Jesus. Our mother here, she's caring. That is where we're celebrating her today. She's kind, kind-hearted. You know, when you, we have, you know, there are people that always say stuff. You know, they say stuff about someone, but you don't care about whatever anybody says, and you stood with God. You know, sometimes all that God wants to see is your consistency with him. Some people will pick nine o'clock to just speak to God. That nine has to remain standing. You see, God loves that. If you choose to start helping people today, don't just help somebody that you know that you know i'm going to help somebody that i know is going to come back to help me that's not what god is saying help someone that you know that you will not be able to get that help back that is what god calls help that's what she does she will stand by anyone ah, we want to get this to say ah, she's older than me now but she wants to talk to me she will go all the way kneel down is it because of the height or the muzzle I don't have any of that to well and get. But it's because of God's grace. I pray that God will help you in the name of Jesus. And everyone that has come here today, whatever your heart desire is, because you are here, God will grant it to you in the name of Jesus. I pray that before this month ends, the surprises that will take you to the next level, God will hand it over to you in the name of Jesus. You know there are some ideas that will come into someone and that ideas will begin to yield millions, trillions and all that. Imagine all those that come up with all these apps and now they are billionaires. I pray that that idea that will take you from the level of mediocrity to a level of glory, God will hand it over to you in the name of Jesus. But remember to get all of this.
follow the decree and obey God's commandment. Eh? You know, we are very eager. When I watch them pray in Nigeria, when the Tobadi Amin la Konshe, you look at Jesus, Amin, you know. And I imagine how many people will go to church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and are still the same level. Because there are principles to life. If you don't get a job, you might not eat. Unless if you have a provider. Eh? If you don't, if you are not rich and you are giving everything you have, you say you are giving it to God, but handing it over to the pastor, you might remain in the same level. Now I'm not saying giving to the pastor is not bad. I'm saying don't be stupid. Hallelujah. That is what God is telling us. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Finally, I want somebody to open the book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Revelation 22, verse 12. And I want you to think of this word all through the week. Use the mic, please. Luke. Yes. I am coming soon. I am coming soon. Can, can you look at someone and say, God is coming soon? Uh-huh. My reward is with me. Uh-huh. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. Okay. That Bible version is NIV, right? Can somebody find another version? Maybe there's a different thing written there. Revelation 22? Yes. Okay. And behold, yes. I will come quickly. Yes. And my reward is with me. Yes. To give every man yes. according as his work shall be. So it's the same word, right? Or do we have another version? Maybe there's a version that is saying something different. God is coming quickly. When I'm in school, you know, some people say they've been saying, God will come, God will come. My grandfather passed, my great grandfather passed. I look at him, I said, Okay, did you know anybody that have died? He said, Yes. Do you know anybody that's younger than you that died? He said, Yes. Older than you that died? Yes. Fatter than you that fat? Yes. Slimmer than you that died? Yes. I said, Do you know when you're going to die? I said, I don't know. I said, God is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's as simple as that. So, if God now comes, think of what he's going to give you. Think of what your reward. That is why the word of God said, teach me how to number my days. Account for those things that you have handed to me. Account for my yesterday. Account for my today. And so that I can account for my prepare for my tomorrow. She has done good. We love her here. And we will continue to love you in the name of Jesus. And we are praying that anything that will make you not love us will not come to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that whatever your support is, everyone that is here, whatever your support is, you know that is a support that God gives to you, that keeps you moving. Sometimes you don't even know that support. It might be somebody somewhere just praying for you. Somebody that you've never even thought of. God will never take that support away in the name of Jesus. Let us just bow wherever we are. And tell God, Father, I have come to you today to celebrate this, my sister. Let your touch of greatness come upon my life. Let us go on and knees while we do the prayer so that we can just do it all together. The touch of God that brings 